Welcome to Word Wednesday with CCF Makati. Good evening, CCF Makati. Welcome to Word Wednesday. We may not be physically joining each other, but we are all here to bless the name of the Lord, who is holy, perfect, abounding in love and grace that is sufficient to all of us. So let's worship Him through these songs of praises. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember. Your people remember your children remember your promise oh God your grace is enough your grace is enough your grace is enough for me great is your Justice, God. You use the weak and lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So we Sea without bottom, 
CCF Makati and welcome to another Word Wednesday. I hope and pray that all of you guys are safe and well. I wish we could do this all in person and say hi to one another, uh, hug each other face to face. But for now, God has blessed us with technology that can be used for good during this pandemic. If it's your first time to join us in Word Wednesday, Please let us know in the comment section. Just type in first and one of our volunteers will get in touch with you and welcome you to our family. We are now or we are still in our Motivate series and we are now in the letter T. Now T stands for training. Training. I love how Pastor Peter said proper intentional training results in transformation. Let me ask you guys this question. How many of you guys had some sort of sports training? Volleyball, basketball, baseball. Um, What happens when you train the right way? You become a better athlete. Plain and simple, you become a better athlete. Right training has right results. Now, let's see how godly training in the family setting can be very effective. But before that, here are a few announcements. 
we'll still have an ongoing project uh, distributing meals for those who are in need, such as people in the barangays, jeepney drivers, and inmates. So how can you help? For as low as 40 pesos, you can send a meal to someone in need. If the Lord moves you to partner with us in this endeavor, you may contact Enzo at the number on screen. We would also like to take this opportunity to thank those who already gave or made a pledge for this project. Now, it's my privilege to introduce to you our sharer for tonight, our pastor for Tagalog and Pastoral Care Ministries, Pastor Ronnie Disipulo. Good evening to all of you out there. Welcome once again to our Word Wednesday. It's always a joy and a privilege to come before the Lord God as a family and study His Holy Word. Pastor Peter last Sunday in the series on Motivate gave us the second to the last, uh, the penultimate way of influencing our children and our loved ones for the glory of the Lord our God. We now come to the letter T, which stands for teach and, of course, train. Train and teach. Now, why do we need to train our children? Because we would like them to experience the life only the Lord our God can ever give, the abundant and meaningful life. You see, the Bible tells us, train up a child in the way he should go, even when he is old. He will not depart from me. But you might be asking, why do we need to train our children? You see, they are innocent. They are good. They really want to obey the parents. You know what the Bible tells us? Actually, the Bible says we need to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And these words which... The lawgiver Moses was telling the people of the living God, Israel, I'm commanding you today shall be on your heart. You see, we need to love the Lord our God with everything that we've got. And more especially, the training that we receive must go deep into the very heart. Again, that question, why train up children as young as they are? You know the reason why? The Bible gives us the true picture of each one of us the moment we are born. And the Bible says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin. My mother conceived me. You see, the Bible clearly says that we are all sinners. Right from the start, when we were conceived, still in the womb of our mothers. And that's the reason why the Bible is so clear enough to tell us to train up children. Again, in Proverbs 22, 15, the Bible says, Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline will remove it far from him. Now, when we look at the word discipline, actually it corresponds to the word training. It means to correct, to really lead a child, each one of us, in the right path, in the right way. Now, many think that teaching is all that is needed to give instruction. But you know the problem with this. Let me give you an illustration. One mother was crying to her Bible teacher and told this teacher, you know what happened to my daughter? Of course, when she was still here with us, she really acted the way we wanted her to act. She was obedient. She was submissive. She was doing the right things. But of course, upon reaching her college, we sent her abroad. And within a few weeks, she gave us the sad news that she was pregnant. And the Bible teacher told this crying mother, you know, probably what happened was she was able to teach 
to, to learn what you were teaching her, probably because she wanted to please you to obey you. But the learning that she received did not penetrate her heart. In other words, it was probably all a show. She was trying to live up to your expectations, the values that you wanted her to have. She was actually doing outwardly. But the moment she left your home, she was out of your reach. Probably she said, now I have to live life the way I wanted it to. And because of that, she went out of bounds. You see, training must really go deep into the heart. And that is where everything matters. You see, that's the reason why the Bible says, guard your heart. So what do we need to train and teach our children? Of course, we have been looking into the series. The first was M, model. In our Motivate series, we need to model. We need to live the way our children would like, our children would live just as we want to, just as the Word of God would like us to. And then we must have open communication with them. You see, this is so important. And the series on Motivate is actually a, a woven teaching that we need to inculcate each one of them, modeling and then open communication. But we also need to give time to our children because love for children is spelled T-I-M-E. And then we need to be intimate with them, not just... Uh, parent-children relationship, something like that. But we need to be the best of friends with them. A very, very wonderful, intimate relationship and fellowship with each one of them. Then we need to give them the vision so that they may have that excitement and the joy to really be what God would like them to be. But of course, we need to affirm them, the affirmation that they need. And right now, to teach them the values, the lessons that we would like for them to have. That these values may be inculcated in their hearts. And so what do we need to teach and train our children? Well, of course, we focus on the heart. We focus on the character. And that's the reason why training must be inculcated deep into the heart of each child. We need to teach them and train them love for God and others. Well, of course, the spirit-filled life so that they may display, they may demonstrate the fruit of the spirit in their lives. We need to model and train them, teach them integrity and honesty. Of course, their individual self-worth their identity in Christ so that they need to live to please God. They must have that testimony that they truly live for the glory of God. We need to train them and teach them diligence, discipline, forgiveness, humility. Of course, we need to teach them the value of work and to be industrious, to be kind, to be courteous to others. And what is truly needed these times, terrible times that we are living in, we need to train them to be critically and biblically thinking. They need to use this mental faculty that the Lord our God has given us. Now, it is so important that we... Follow these things all for the glory of God because this is what the Lord our God would like us to have, to experience all for his glory and honor. A man by the name of Adoniram Judson was born into a Christian family. Adoniram's father was a minister. His mother loved the Lord God. And so he was brought up in the ways of the Lord. But you see... The importance of really modeling and really living out what God would like us to be doing and to be. 
Adoniram saw this in his parents. But when he reached his college days, he was influenced by a friend who was not a follower of the Lord God. But this friend taught him the ways of the world. And so somehow Adoniram felt that liberty caught on God. He somehow abandoned, abandoned his religious upbringing. And he learned the ways of the world right now. But of course, this grieved the parents who continued to love him unconditionally and prayed for him. And you know what happened? This same friend was used of God to bring Adoniram back to the Lord. What happened? In one of his travels, Adoniram checked in at a local hotel. And the clerk told him the only available room was adjacent to an occupant who was suffering terribly. You might not be able to sleep, sir. And Adonai, Adoniram, being tired as he was, said, oh, okay, I, I'll just take my chance. I'm going to take that room. And so when he went into the room and tried to sleep, he could not sleep. You know why? Because the man on the adjacent room was suffering terribly. He was groaning. He was terribly in pain. And Adoniram was wondering, who could that be? Early the next morning when he woke up, all was silent. And when he asked the hotel clerk, he was told the man on the adjacent room died. And when he found out who that man was, it was his best friend, you know, the man who influenced him to abandon his Christian faith. And because of that, Adoniram was so scared. He went back home, asked forgiveness from his parents, and he lived to be a man mightily used of God in the missionary field in Burma. You see, friend, the Bible says, train up a child the way he should go and his only will not depart from it. Now, tonight, I would like you to listen to one of my children. Actually, he was the youngest among three. Let's now listen. Let's hear Paul's testimony. Good evening. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, Train up a child the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. My name is Paul, and I am the youngest among three siblings. As a young and innocent person that I was, my dad would often tell me on the do's and don'ts in life as I was growing up. He would remind me never to smoke cigarette, try drugs, get drunk with wine, or be involved in premarital or casual sex. I didn't understand most of them at that time, but I grew up not doing or even trying anything of those things, and now I understood why. Same with my mom. She would tell me not to have any girlfriend yet until I would be successful in life. So, up to this point, I still haven't reached to that success yet. I'm just kidding. So my parents taught and trained us life principles found in the Bible that we should uphold by modeling them to us. My dad was very active in sports and outdoor activities. I would recall that there were days when we would go jog in the morning, play badminton, bowling, chess, and did rides with our bicycles. He was also good in mathematics. He taught me that the advantage in solving math problems, unlike other subjects that involves memorizing, was that even though you could not remember the answer, as long as you knew the basic principles, you would always find the solution. That was one of the reasons why I choose to cherish mathematics as well. Another principle that he taught me was to never be afraid or be shy to do anything, especially if you were only doing the right thing and you would not be sinning against God. So in my level of understanding at that time, I took that principle in a different approach. During exams where anyone was not allowed to talk to, the, to, to their neighbor because it would be considered as cheating, I would go to my teacher's desk and would ask my teacher directly all the questions that I did not understand. Most of them during my earnest desire to understand the question would also give me the hints to the answer as well. Upholding this principle made me more confident of myself and as a result, my name would always be listed in the most talkative in class and those who were nips or not in their proper seats. Now my mother, 
my mother's style of modeling is even better, but in a hard way that most kids, I believe, would not appreciate. She's indeed next to godliness because her standard of cleanliness was way beyond average. I didn't remember her accompanying me in taking a bath, so everything should be done by myself. As early as age 7 until we reached the age of 12, we were taught to wash our clothes, budget our money, give tithes, and go to school on our own. For my school needs, if it's still working, then there's no need for replacement. If it's not necessary, then there's no need to buy it. I was raised to be contented with what I had, and consequently, I never felt jealous if my classmates got the latest or branded school materials and gadgets because my mom taught me right on that principle. They all produced the same functions, then that was all there is to it. The best principle I would like to share that my mom taught us is that whatever status we are in, in richness or in need, there should always be food on the table. She never neglected in preparing food for us that was not sufficient, and my healthy body could testify to that. Fast forward. One of the best blessings that I have received in my obedience and following the advice given by my parents was that after I finished my college degree. Most students, after they graduated, would continue to study to prepare for their upcoming board exams. Everyone aims to pass their board exams on their first take, so any distraction should be removed. However, my parents wanted me to find a job right away and that I should be working immediately. To be honest, I was a bit rebellious and reactive when they told me that, thinking they did not understand how hard it would be for me to work and review at the same time and thinking they just belittled those board exams. I was certain that I would fail if I followed their advice because it will cause distractions in my review. But God, yes, God reminded me in Exodus 2012 and Ephesians 6, 1 to honor and obey my parents. I would have felt miserable if I had imposed my own terms but did not get the blessings from them. So I obeyed them wholeheartedly and looked for a job. In God's goodness, I was accepted to become a technical instructor in my own alma mater. I was given subjects that were also part of the scope of my exams, and during breaks, I would study other subjects. To make the long story short, I brilliantly passed the aeronautics board exam last November 2013 and became a certified aeronautical engineer. Only 50% at that time uh, among the takers uh, passed the exam. So. The bonus blessing in obeying them was that from the day I was employed up to the present, there was not a single day that I became unemployed. My last day as an instructor was my first day of employment the day after as a maintenance planner engineer in Cebu Pacific where I am currently employed. Such blessings indeed we receive if we continually honor and obey our parents and put our trust in our Almighty God. Today, we are even more open and closer to one another as a family. And I can honestly say that there are no parents I would rather have than my mama and papa themselves. I am Engineer Ronald Paul Disipolo, and I give all glory and honor and praises to my one and only Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. Well, praise God for that, Paul. And your mom and I are really proud of you. We thank the Lord God that even though we had so many kapalpakans, you know, many faults, weaknesses, still, by the grace of God, God, our Father, ever so faithful, He really did His part in molding each one of you, our children. And right now, we thank God for you. So you see, friends, indeed, God is so good. He is a faithful God. We may fail, but He remains faithful. And so we need to go back to God, ask for His forgiveness, and do the things we were doing at first, just like His message to the church in Ephesus. You see, when we focus on training for our children to be the best for God, we also need to teach them submission. Not only to parents, but even to authority. Allow me to close with this word that we find from the word of God. 
In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 to 15, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as the one in authority or to governors as sent by him, for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God that by doing right, you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Training up a child the way it should go, it means the big O. And what is that big O? Obedience to the Lord of God. Because faith is expressed in our obedience, but more especially, love for Jesus Christ is expressed by our obedience to his word. As Jesus tells us, he who loves me keeps my commandment. May the Lord our God abundantly bless you till our next Word Wednesday. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us here at Word Wednesday. If you are meeting with your D group tonight, here are the suggested breakout questions. We will pause while you take a screenshot. For those availing of a Zoom breakout room for their D group, kindly take note of the Zoom details or take a photo of the QR code on screen. Zoom rooms will be open till 10 p.m. If you haven't signed up for a breakout room, please let us know in the comments and we'd be glad to assist you. If you're with us for the first time, would like to be prayed over, or in need of counseling, please take note of the link or take a photo of the QR code on screen. Our volunteers would be glad to serve you. Once again, thank you for joining Word Wednesday. We hope to see you again next week right here at 6.30 p.m. Have a blessed evening.